post election results. Um, yeah. I think I think we officially know who the winner is. I we think. do. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. He got um he's hit the two seventy yeah. in the electoral college. So um Yeah, well look It's a boy. <laughs> That's democracy. We've got to accept. I mean, regardless of anyone's opinion, that's that's how it goes. Yeah. You know, uh, there's a winner, there's a loser. Yeah. It was End definitely. Off. Yeah. It was definitely, bro. Like, it was definitely the the year of TikTok campaigning. I feel like TikTok campaigning from both parties was so 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 heavy compared to obviously the one the one four years ago. Yeah. I mean, does this mean that Trump had a better marketing campaign than Kamala? It's an interesting one. I think, um, I think really one thing that drives this is gender as well, mm. and essentially being macho, right? And I've seen a lot of interviews with with people who, you know, a lot of people whose tr whose policies, tr sorry, a lot of people who would be affected directly negatively by Trump's policies yeah. who were still very much like this. But when people, when you are there was like um, street interviews and yeah. you ask sort of like a lot of men about who they vote for, yeah. and if they say Kamala, it's always Oh, Kamala. Yeah. If it's Trump, it's Trump. Yeah. Trump. Yeah. yeah. There's so like, it's like there's a desire to be macho, yeah. even if that means hurting yourself. Yeah. There's an insecurity, and I think a lot of these people um, are probably. I think deep down, bless them, they know that they've not had the education to be able to have a reasoned discussion about whether policies will affect them in certain ways or not, yeah. and they just go for the macho one because they don't want to look weak. And you know, fair enough. I, I personally, I'm secure enough my masculinity to say I'd happily be led by a woman whether that's a manager yeah. or a president or whatever but some people can't handle it and yeah well what i'll say the final thing is i'll say well not final thing but on this rant is yeah. um careful what you wish for is what i'll say mm. um because you never know how things might go yeah it's it's scary man it's scary like every every four years they do this thing of like but especially they did it really 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 effectively this time was like the fear mongering of people they were Absolutely. like this will be the last election if we don't win. Yeah. Especially Trump's side. Like, they kept stressing the fact they're like, we need to win this. If we don't win this, it's over for America forever. We're doomed, blah, blah, blah. And I guess it worked to some extent. I think, bit of a hot take, I think that if Kamala was a man, I think she would have won. I agree. I absolutely agree. That's, that's completely correct. I think uh, as, like, a blanket statement, and I know this is not, like, obviously 100% accurate, but blanket statement... I think America isn't and was not ready for a female president. I totally agree. I totally agree with you. I think it's, um, it's an, again, it's an insecurity thing. Yeah. It's just that I think there's a lot of men out there who can't bring themselves to be led by a woman. And yeah, it's, it's a very, very, very interesting situation. Yeah, because they could like, again, in general, like the average man, I guess, in America, so maybe not an average man, but the average man in America would barely stomach a male Democrat. So a female Democrat is like their idea of hell, probably. I totally agree with and, you. And um, yeah, she had a good run. Um, she did. I was, I've got to be honest. I think when it came to Hillary, when it came to winning the first time around, I, I, from the start, I was like, he's going to win. Yeah. He's 100% going to yeah, win. Yeah. There was so much passion behind it. And Hillary Clinton was very, um, uh, she was just distant. She's part of a dynasty. She's, her husband was president, for goodness yeah. sake. So his whole like drain the swamp thing which was the whole thing back yeah. then worked perfectly because well she's literally the wife of a yeah. previous president and so. that was really effective at the time because that yes. was like a new concept the idea of like draining the swamp Completely. let's like turn the system over on its head Completely. and he still he still did it a bit less this time but yeah because i guess like to him kamala is the system that they are despising and he has successfully won um, and I think um, my argument just to that uh, with the Hillary Clinton thing is in 2016, I genuinely thought it was this time though, I thought she was going to win. I, 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 I cards on the table. I, it was really close. Yeah, it was so close, but I think a lot of the, because I listen, you know, listen to a lot of political podcasts, yeah. like, I try to get, you know, from both sides, even people that I don't necessarily agree with, like Joe Rogan, for example, I, I listen to him even though I don't like a lot of his views. Um, but I genuinely thought she was going to win. I thought yeah. that her campaign had so much momentum. I thought that she, I thought it was exciting. It, it reminded me of 2008 Obama era. Like I just, yeah, yeah I, I, hey, I'm the first to say I was completely wrong. Happy to yeah. admit it. No, no worries. I wish I was a betting man, man. Yeah, gosh. Well, funny enough, there was a, a chap on a podcast that I listened to who said he was going to bet £100,000 that um, Kamala was going to win. He said he would. Do, and whether he did or not, I don't, don't yeah. know. 
But yeah, if wow. he did, rest in peace, man. Bro. Yeah, it's gonna be me. a hard couple of years of work ahead. But yeah, man, like I have this thing where like. So I don't bet because I come from a background that's like betting is like frowned upon, blah, Indeed. blah, blah. Indeed. Um, but bro, if I was a betting man, I'd be like maybe maybe a millionaire by now. Well, funnily <laughs> enough, the, the, the one bit of betting I was going to do, I have literally like $200 worth of cryptocurrency, okay. right? Because it's a long story. I had this old job that yeah. paid me cryptocurrency. And I, a few weeks ago, was like, oh, maybe I should like buy a bit more. And what I did, this is such a boring story, but essentially I went to buy like a, a, a bit more, not not heat, not thousands, but a couple of hundred more. And for some reason, the app just messed up and it ended up depositing it back into a bank account or something stupid. Yeah. And I looked last night and I've made like another, so like 60 bucks on that. Yeah. And if I'd have, you know, if I'd have put in a thousand dollars on there, I think that would have been like $300 yeah. overnight. It's nothing. crazy. So uh, that was the kind of betting that I, Actually, does investment count as betting? Is that haram or is it not? No. No, no, no investment no, should be okay. fine. Yeah, cool, cool. But crypto is a little like murky because like Yeah. It's it's almost luck. Like Yeah, yeah well the whole thing's luck, really, yeah. isn't it? The whole thing's yeah. kinda luck, yeah. Uh, speaking of crypto, Bitcoin shut the fuck up. I mean, all the cryptocurrencies shut the fuck up. This is my point. This is my exact point. I should have hours. Exactly why I bring it up is that last is that if I wish last week yeah. I had have properly done it. So um, I'll happily share this with, with people because I, it's a very, very small amount of money. It's not like, it's not thousands. So I had a hundred and, yeah, so there you go. 209, I think I had 160 last night. Yeah, 7.18%. It's gone up in a day. God For damn. a stock to go up that much in a single day yeah. is, is just crazy. It went up about, what, $9,000 overnight, US dollars overnight, Bitcoin. That's mad. It was 68 and now it was like 67 and now it's $75,000. Wow, 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 wow. On route to 100,000 probably at some point next year, I think. Yeah. Um, not financial advice? Nope. Do not follow financial advice. I I don't I don't have any crypto. I got rid of it because I got scared and I, and I only have it because I was doing a job a while ago where someone had to pay yeah. me in crypto. Yeah. And before, if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't have had any. So it's yeah. the most unreliable thing ever, bro. Like, because especially like a couple of years ago when Elon had just bought Twitter, he was like pumping these coins all of a sudden, blah blah blah, and like. Bro, people's whole livelihoods were like depending on this fucking one Elon Musk guy, and I bet he's happy right now. Oh, of course. And that's the thing as well is that I think why I am always troubled. What I look, obviously, of course, we make our own decisions. We have our own critical thinking. When it comes to politics, I guess you've just got to look at what kind of people are cheering for yeah. who. And for Kamala, you know, you look at scientists, teachers, thought leaders, intellectuals. Whereas you look at Trump and it's shady, corrupt businessmen yeah. like Elon Musk, yeah. like the pillow guy, like Sean Spicer. Yeah. And it's like, well, who would I rather be in a room with? Who who who, yeah. who has my best interests at yeah. heart? Are the Carmela side perfect? Of course they're not. Are there crooks on the Carmela side? Of course there are. But gosh. <laughs> yeah. yeah it's, it's genuinely the lesser of two evils every four years. And yeah, yeah I agree. I agree with that. Maybe the more evil one this time. Maybe. Yeah, I'd, I'd say I'd say certainly the more uh, with more even intentions. That's for sure. Yeah, I mean the mass wants the mass the mass deportation of eleven million yeah. Ameri oh, citizens or not citizens people on the first day it wants to ban reinstate the ban from for Muslims from seven different countries. Which the thing is that you know I, I don't want to play the card of like oh, I've got Muslim friends, but I literally <laughs> growing up in North London I, I do you know, I grew up yeah. a lot of Muslim friends and I know that um, when that ban was reinstated, hate crimes go up yeah, all around course, the world, course, and course. I feel for my friends who. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm a white man, as I, I, like yeah. I say, I stand to, dare I say, well, not benefit, but my point is I'm least directly affected by Trump's presidency, yep. yeah, it worries me the most, it really does. Yeah, it, it builds, yeah, th those kind of policies, those like discriminatory kind of policies, they build tensions and those tensions lead to like hate crimes and absolutely, it's heinous and like a lot of times when that stuff kind of goes down, you're like, you always look at the root cause and you're like, ah, oh, we should have known better. Like it was, it's always a trickle down effect. Yes, completely. And it's like, had this not happened, then the, that would have not lead, led to like the hate crime, the riots, blah, 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 blah. The only thing, the only, the only bit of optimism that I do have about this, right, is that if Kamala had a one, like I said, there'd have been riots and yeah. like that um, groundswell of MAGA, that yeah. would not have gone away. If yeah. anything, it would have grown, right? Yeah. It's like kicking yeah. the hornet's nest. Yeah. So what I'm saying is now over the next four years, there will be, inevitably, in any premiership, in any presidency, no matter who you are in the world, there are always negatives, right? Yeah. So what I'm optimistic about, I don't want people to suffer, but I hope that in these four years, people realize kind of what they've done. And the only way for them to do that 
is through Trump doing things. If Kamala had have come in and done some great things, people wouldn't have given a shit. Yeah. So if Trump comes in and causes some trouble, there'll be a lot of people, a lot of young men around the world who will say, oh, what the yeah. fuck have I done? Yeah. <laughs> particularly around, and yeah. I'm not, you know, particularly around the morning after pill abortion, there's going to be a lot of guys out there who are going to be paying child support yeah. for a long time. And I heard a funny story about that. Is that like, so, you know, he has one of his youngest sons, Baron. Yes. He, he's like fucking six foot eight something. Is he? Yeah, he's, he's freakishly tall. Didn't know that. He's freakishly wow, tall. Wow, did not know that. He, it's bizarre. Wow. And um, he goes to NYU. Yeah. And so it's this is like a generally liberal place, yeah. liberal uni. And being six foot seven, Trump was asked if like, Maybe he needs to reinstate, not reinstate, maybe he needs to abolish Roe. Wait, is, it, is Roe v. Wade for or against abortion? For. So abolish... Abolishing Roe v. Wade is, means bringing back... Uh, not abortion. <laughs> not abortion. So reinstating is... Yeah, taking Roe Ro v. Wade being in place yeah. means abortion is all good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, he was asked if he should put it back in because Baron is probably fucking laying pipe every day. <laughs> But I want to show you, oh show you what it God. looks like. <laughs> Laying. <laughs> it's a good point, though. Because, like, I mean, with the whole thing with, like, abortion, uh, this might sound crazy. It's like everybody's against abortion until they get somebody pregnant yeah, that yeah. they don't want pregnant. I agree. I agree. But also, like, just there's, there's the moral perspective. There's giving women, you know, the right to. Jeez, he's, he's massive. He is a freak of nature. He was like a child. I remember seeing him in the news and he was just yeah. like a little boy. Wow. wow. I, what, it's odd. Uh, one thing as well that I will say about abortion, which is an interesting point, which someone explained to me a few years ago, which I never even considered. Yeah. So there's the moral argument, obviously women should have the right to choose, which I personally agree with. All, all of that stuff, right? No one ever speaks about the economic argument. And this is what I mean by the economic argument. Wealthy people will yep. always be able to get abortions, right? They'll yep. always be able to do it. If a girl gets pregnant and her dad's rich, she can go to three states over and they can get taken care of, whatever, right? Poor people cannot do that, right? So what we're going to see in states where abortion is highly restricted, we're going to see a whole generation of kids who are born. There's going to be a, an imbalance. There's going to yeah. be a huge amount of kids that are born into families that cannot handle having a child. Yeah. There's going to be loads of kids put into state care, massive burden on the system, and all these rich people yeah. will not be born. Yeah. So if you give it 10, 15, 20 years, it will mm. have a dramatic effect. So there's going to be a lot of southern states yeah. which are going to suffer. Yeah. So there we yeah. go. But by which time, a lot of the MAGA people will be too senile and old or dead <laughs> to even realize what the fuck's going on. So, uh, One of the funniest things that happened was uh, <clears throat> at, his, uh, at Trump's presidential speech, like his winning speech, he had like a bunch of people come before him or like thank him and stuff. Dana White was one of them. Yeah. Uh, president of UFC needs no introduction. But he did, the, he had obviously like a 30 second speech only. And like he was just shouting out the people that helped Trump win. Yeah. And bro, he shouted out Aiden Ross. He shouted out the Nelk boys. He shouted out Theo Vaughn. He shouted out fucking YouTubers and Twitch streamers and fucking podcast hosts to fucking for, for Trump's win. So like, I don't know if that made the difference, but the fact that we have the fucking president of the UFC at the presidential's fucking winning speech <laughs> shouting out a fucking Twitch streamer oh my on some like, thank you for having Trump on your Twitch stream. Like Aiden Ross is an, yeah, this is what I mean. Like, it's just, this is, this is why I, there is a part of me that almost, I don't want to say respect MAGA, but I, I kind of find it interesting how they have, it is kind of a, a revolution. Like, the whole thing of it all being suits and ties and people who went to Harvard and whatever, yeah. which is something that we still grapple with in the UK with Eton and Windsor and Cambridge and Oxford. Mm. They have kind of smashed that in the US. So there are elements of MAGA that I look at and I go, you know what, fair play. I just yeah. don't think the end result yeah. benefits working class yeah. people. But yeah. hey, there's, there's definitely- You can admiration. learn something from everybody. Yeah, 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 for sure. For and sure. Um, yeah, it was just such a dystopian thing to see Dana White. Dana White. Shout yeah. out Aiden Ross and the Nelk Boys. Do you know the Nelk Boys? No, I've heard of them. But yeah. I'm not, I'm, I know Aiden Ross, but yeah. I'm not across the Nelk They're Boys. They're basically man. this like Canadian frat group who are now like just over 30. And I mean, they've been doing the same content for years. They just go to colleges, drink. They're, they've they they've made the drink Happy Dad. I don't know if you've heard of Oh, that yeah, yeah. Bell, yeah, yeah. And yeah, crazy, man. Uh, wow. It's, yeah, it's, it's a really, really bizarre time. But then... I guess, I guess the other thing is that people are having a stake and a, and a, and a say 
in politics who've yeah. for decades and decades or centuries even have been disenfranchised so yeah like i say i guess it's it, 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 it is a good thing that yeah. people who have less are getting involved in politics and are having their voices heard heard just from a selfish perspective obviously yeah. i wish it was on the other <laughs> side but at the end of the day who the hell am i to tell someone how to think who the hell am i to say that my way is better than anyone else's i'm nobody i just have yeah. my preference i wish it happened it didn't we accept it and let's see what happens although i say one thing is that Kamala would not have wanted the level of revenge the trump is going to get i do yeah. slightly worry about the concept of revenge because i think two wrongs never make a right I yeah think it's better to just accept things especially and move at on. that scale yeah yeah yes. and, I, and i and i do sort of think like what is what is next like it's yeah yeah is he going on a, on a revenge tour now like yeah. and also let's, let's not forget the guy's 78 78 not yeah. 68 like no. this guy is almost, this guy is he's up there old he's up old there. old yeah, yeah and i say one last thing as well i mean we saw and uh you know we saw people actually attempt make attempts on trump's yeah. life yeah. during the campaigns and i mean i absolutely hope that does not happen again i think that's that is terrible and despicable but what i'm saying is i wouldn't be surprised if similar incidents did occur yeah, yeah. i mean you know what it's like in the us i mean yeah. how easy they have access to those yeah. things like gosh scary. yeah it's, it's yeah it's a strange one scary times man yeah. scary times very, very we'll see how the next couple months pan out and then the next four years after that um and I just and one one last yeah, thing, go. one last little stat on the you can say yeah the bang bang thing yeah. but um, pew pew. <laughs> um, pew pew that's it <laughs> <laughs> um when you have this is a crazy stat when you have presidents who are conservative, who are MAGA, who are Republican, gun sales go down. When mm. you have presidents like Obama, Hillary, or whoever, Biden, gun sales go up because when a Democrat or a liberal president is in place, people feel that their guns are under threat. Whereas they know uh, that under Trump, yeah, their fine. guns aren't going away anytime yeah. soon. So there's less urgency to buy them. So yeah. very interesting. It's yeah. very, very interesting. Oh, that's, I've never thought about that's that. It's crazy, right? Yeah. It's crazy. So like, even though the, even though the guns become more widely accepted and whatever, yeah. and it's okay, whatever, the actual sales and yeah. the actual, what the NRA makes and yeah. whatever, that actually goes down during a yeah. Republican presidency, which so, is fascinating. People that sell pew pew. You should have voted Kamala, man. Come on, guys. What the fuck is wrong with <laughs> <laughs> Yeah.